again. This is Thursday, July 21st of 2016, and I am back to you again with another vlog video for today. Um, before I get into the main part of the vlog, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody who sent condolences uh, via Facebook. Uh, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, you probably don't follow me on Facebook, uh, we did have to put our cat Simon to sleep yesterday. Um, he basically was not doing well at all. He was not eating at all anymore. He was not drinking for the past two days. He was just sitting in the closet. Um, and we, when we went to pick him up each time, we could tell he was at death's door because he was just skin and bones. You could actually feel his spine. He had absolutely no fat left on him. So we don't know exactly what happened. We brought, we brought him in to get him put to sleep. Actually, Mom did it alone. I asked her if she wanted me to come. She said no. She'd rather just be alone. And I can kind of understand that because Simon was more her cat. And I think sometimes when the two of us are together, we get a little bit too emotional. So I think it was better that way. Um, but when she brought Simon in, the vet basically said that it was probably something like cancer. I mean, there really is no way to know for sure at this point. Um, we weren't going to pay the thousand dollars it would have cost for the test to, to verify because we knew that he wasn't going to pull through at this point. So, um, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's really hard to lose a cat. They are like a member of the family, uh, and it's just, uh, it's something I've been really weighing over the past few days. I mean, I, I, I'm okay. I just, you know, haven't really felt like doing much of anything. I did uh, work on some computers yesterday, and I'm actually working on two new systems right now that I'm going to show you guys uh, in just a couple of minutes, but it's just been on my mind ever since we had to put him down, because he was really a good cat. Um, we got him... Uh, let's see, about f almost 14 years ago uh, from the ASPCA, in other words, the Pound in, uh, in the downtown area of our of Chesapeake, basically. Um, I'll never forget, my aunt was actually with us. Uh, aunt Karen, if you see this, you probably remember, uh, she was down visiting, and uh, this was just shortly after our other cat, uh, Oliver, we had to put him down. He was only 10, so we definitely had Simon a good long time compared to the other cat, but... She went down with us, I'll never forget, we went into the uh, ASPCA, uh, we went through this whole huge area where they had tons of dogs, must have had a hundred dogs, and it, we, we walked through, it was like a big, it was almost like a big galley, dogs to the left, dogs to the right, you walked down there, it seemed like it went on endlessly, and then towards the end there was a little door that led you to a tiny little back room where they had the cats, and they did not have many, I remember they had the they had like a, a three wall they had four walls and three of them had cages and the the far wall to the left there were a bunch of kittens that were feral that they weren't going to be able to adopt at least they wouldn't be able to without a lot of fostering care um to the left there was only one cat and it was a uh, female persian cat and we tried to pet it but it wasn't that friendly so we looked around and we were about to leave because we they really didn't have that much to choose from and as I, we were walking out i noticed in the bottom cage around the bottom uh there was simon and we didn't know what it, what it was we didn't know if it was a male or a female um we were more specifically looking for a male cat because that's all we've had in the past and we've generally had good luck with the male cats and i said well what about this one and then the uh a person looked through the inventory, that's what they call it, which I think is ridiculous, but yeah, they looked through their list and they said, okay, yeah, yeah, this is a uh, male, uh, neutered, and they thought he was about a year, a year and a half old. I said, well, let me, let me take a look at him. So they opened the cage, and I kid you not, as soon as the cage is open, the, Simon jumps into mom's arms and just kind of lays right there and starts suckling on her. So... From that moment, we knew that it was going to be our cat, and we signed the paperwork and took him home, and we never looked back since. He was one of the sweetest cats. Now, granted, he was a very independent cat, but I kind of like that, because I don't want an animal that's just going to come in and just kind of bug you all the time. You know, there were times when he didn't want to be bugged, and if you went to pet him, he would just shirk away and you know, go do his own thing, but there were times like, uh, usually around 5, 6 at night when mom got home, he would come down, we'd give him some food, and then we'd eat, and, and maybe it'd be around 6.30 or 7, we'd go upstairs, and uh, he'd come up and he'd stand right on that little filing cabinet in between the two recliners in the den, 
and he would go back and forth. I'd pet him for a while. He'd purr. He'd go back to mom. He'd lay on her, and she he'd pet her, and she pet her, and he'd purr. And he'd kind of go back and forth. And he did that for years. And I guess that's the thing. I mean, there's always going to be fond memories I have of Simon. And, you know, that's what we got to look at. You know, he's never going to, he's not coming back. You know, maybe I'll see him in heaven. I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into a philosophical uh, dis debate here. But, you know, it's just nice to have the memories. I have lots of pictures of Simon. And as one YouTube user pointed out, um, I do have lots of videos of him, too. Because I actually uh, recorded uh, him quite a bit for this channel and there are other videos I've done that I never posted up to YouTube so this is just my little tribute to my cat Simon well our cat Simon let's say he was probably more mom's cat again than he was mine but he loved all of us Eh, I kinda tell a lie he wasn't that crazy about dad you know he dad could pet him but he could care less cuz dad yeah he and Simon kinda clashed LT is more uh, mine and dad's cat but that's a discussion for another time well, I'm going to turn you guys over and show you what I'm working on, so I'll talk to you guys in a couple All of minutes. Alright guys, so, here are a couple of systems that I picked up the other day. This is from my uh, friend Jeff, and uh, stuff that he's had lying around for a while, so I figured, he figured they were time to, uh, to go ahead and get some use out of. These are NCS systems, and I'm actually just about to install Windows 10, but I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, specs-wise what they are. They're not bad. They, they're all the same pretty much, and I must have just inadvertently hit the Windows Anytime upgrade. They are Core 2 Duo E8400s, so they're running at 3 gigahertz with 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I think they have ATI Radeon uh, cards. I haven't actually checked that yet. Let me see. Yes, they're ATI Radeon HD 4350 cards, so 512 megabytes of dedicated video memory. Not the highest end computers, but again, good for somebody who wants to get on the internet, uh, do email, maybe word processing. And these will also handle uh, HD video, so somebody who wants to maybe use a computer to watch Netflix, um, it, they should be perfectly fine for that. One thing I thought was really cool about these, they actually have these um, hard drive enclosures. And what I like about that is this particular computer, the way it's set up, only has one bay for a hard drive. So I was actually able to get two hard drives in the the hard drive that was in here when I got it was a 320 gigabyte Hitachi and then right in here I added another 250 gigabyte Seagate so it's got a 320 and a 250 so plenty of storage for most people I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start this Windows 10 installation and yes I know some people are gonna give me a heck about that but you know what it is what it is so I'll go over some of the other ports here it's got two USB 2.0 on the front it actually has some FireWire ports, which I'm really surprised because from what this is dated, this was put together around 2010, and by 2010, FireWire was mostly gone, so I can only assume it must have been something that the person that ordered these systems originally asked for, because if they didn't, I can't imagine they would have actually included uh, FireWire in here. Uh, front headphone, front audio ports, you know, for headphone, microphone, and yes, guys, an actual reset button. How long... Has it been since you guys have seen a reset button on a computer? Uh, it's been a long time for me. As a matter of fact, even these computers, my HP Pavilion running Windows 2000, and my even older Gateway do not have reset buttons, so that's kind of neat. That's something you'll only find basically in a custom system. Turn you guys to the back real quick. You got your standard, um, this is an Antec 300 watt power supply. Got, um, PS2 keyboard mouse ports here. If I can, hopefully I'm getting this camera at the right angle. Uh, some legacy ports, serial, parallel, uh, VGA built in. Then you have four USB 2.0 ports in the back. Uh, Firewire. Uh, this is your 10100. This I believe is a, a gigabit Ethernet port. This I kind of found interesting. This actually has the full array of surround sound um, audio ports, which usually don't find on a business class system, so I guess they probably used a motherboard from just a regular home-based PC. And then the ports on the video card. I actually like these video cards because not only do they have DVI, but they have HDMI and they have a VGA, so I believe you can actually hook up three different monitors to this. There may be a two monitor limitation, and you guys can leave uh, that in the comments if there is, but the way I'm seeing it here, I believe you can actually hook up three separate monitors to this, which is 
really cool and before I sell this I might actually include two different monitors so we'll just have to see how that works out. Alright guys, so I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, I know I haven't done too many uh, computer related videos recently and for obvious reasons so I thought I'd give you guys a little treat there. I did pick up three of those systems from him and I believe they're all exactly the same spec because they were all pretty much built around the same time. I also have a couple other systems that I will show you guys later that are still sitting in the car. Probably not going to be today. Um, it is really, really hot out again. Heat index today is going to be close to 100. And I'm pretty much going to stay inside and do some work here. So I don't really need to uh, venture out. Though, I do have to run out to Dollar Tree real quick. Because for dinner, we're going to have hamburgers. And I have to buy some hamburger buns and a few other things. So we'll have to go out at least once today. And I'll probably wait till about 3 in the afternoon to do it. Because right now, it's getting close to noon. It's about quarter to noon. And that is when, in, in most areas, including here, the sun is at its highest and hottest. So, right now, it's it's a bear out there. Matter of fact, I need to go check on Dad because he's been working on the uh, trailer. Got some really cool news about the trailer for you guys. Um, Dad was working on the hitch in the back of the trailer. He was just I, he didn't tell me exactly what he was doing, but I think he was just trying to see the uh, weight capacity and what it could handle. And he found something really, really neat on the trailer. And I am going to show this to you in the future. Um, as you guys probably know already, we purchased uh, two scooters to go along with us when we go on uh, vacation. Um, Dad kind of had them modified, and I think they actually came out pretty good. Well, when he was working on the hitch, he noticed there was like a rail or a, la uh, a metal landing underneath the bumper. And he's trying to figure out what that was. Well, it turns out that trailer has a scooter rack yes he pulled it out and it is large enough to house both of our scooters and it can even handle the weight so that was a really really cool find I am absolutely stoked that it has that because now we don't have to waste space in the other storage area towards the front uh, storing the scooters those can actually we can actually use that for storing you know camping gear uh, chairs tables and things like that so that was awesome I absolutely am floored and we we're trying to figure out if it was something that was added on but we found out it wasn't because if you look underneath it and even on top it shows you that it has the Keystone logo on it so basically that was something that came uh, with the trailer originally so very very pleased to see that well, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here for a few minutes. I'm going to go check on Dad, and we'll see what the rest of the day brings. Talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, bit. guys. So let's head out real quick. I want to show you a few things. It is still pretty hot out. It's 87 degrees, but it is only 56% humidity, so you don't break a sweat fairly quickly. I do want to show you something that's been happening. We've had a beetle problem, major beetle, beetle problem. As you can see... A lot of mom's leaves on her plum tree have been eaten. You can see the holes in that one. You can see tons of holes here. And a few weeks ago, if I was to shake it, you'll actually feel the beetles falling out. They've actually uh, went away now. I think they got the food they needed and uh, moved on. But yeah, oh wow, look at this one. That one's really, really bad. But the tree should be okay. Um, we really didn't have a chance to get any type of pest repellent because this happened when we were upstate and dad didn't realize it so yeah oh man look at these these are really bad this one this whole branch these leaves have just been totally decimated uh, by these beetles and we knew they're beetles because when we got home you could actually again you could actually see them uh, flying around and falling out of the tree if you were to shake it it was almost like a Christmas tree of beetles falling out so I think she'll be okay, but um, yeah, it's going to take a little bit more time to All recover All right, guys, now. so I'm going to bring you over to the trailer and show you what I was talking about. This thing was so cool. I am absolutely floored that it even has this dad, and none of us had any idea. The people that uh, sold us the trailer didn't even tell us it was part of it. But if you come back here, you can see it right there. The bumper before was flush with the trailer. And like I said, when my dad went back here to look at the hitch area where the, um, the tire is, he noticed that there was this little landing underneath. And when he went to pull these pins out, there are a couple of pins right here. Hopefully I'm getting this one on this side and one on the other. He pulled them out and he pulled this out. You could see that there was this, indeed, this little um, 
stand for putting scooters and he measured it and he said that both scooters will fit just fine on here. It's even got this little bar so you can lock everything down. So basically what will happen is put the two scooters there, run a chain through each scooter, and then the chain will run through this little loop here and it'll lock them down. So yeah, we don't have to sacrifice any space uh, in the limited storage space inside the, tr the trailer. So yeah, this was really awesome. And I'll show you once again, for those of you that didn't see the uh, trailer video, this is where we were going to put them. This is uh, a little storage space that we have underneath the trailer. And uh, hopefully you guys can see all right in here. I'll try and put the light on. But yeah, you can see that it's fairly large, but if you put the two scooters in there, really wouldn't have much room for anything else. And of course, now we have the two ramps here, and then we also have that picnic table. So yeah, that was really nice to be able to uh, find an extra space in there. So yep, let me go ahead and bring you guys inside real quick, because there is one other thing I want to show you. All right, should be nice and cool. Dad said he's had the AC going all morning, so let's see. Ooh nice and cool in here show you guys a little thing here you can see he hasn't really cleaned up yet but we have actually purchased a portable air conditioner for the bedroom that's right guys because the the central AC really does not work very well in the bedroom the one we got here it's an LG portable air conditioner 10,000 BTU so basically this will be good enough to go ahead and uh, cool off the entire RV if we need to so let's say we go somewhere and the central AC stops working, this will be able to handle it just fine. And I believe he's actually put it in here already, so let's take a look and see what he's working on. Oh yeah. Well, as you can see, this is where he's going to put it. Um, I think he may actually take the shelving unit out so we can kind of tuck it in the corner. Basically how this works is it has a little vent here. This is how it uh, vents the air, the hot air outside. And I believe there's another little hose that comes out into here and actually vents all the, uh, the condensation or the uh, humidity, the water that gets created when you use an air conditioner. But this is going to work really, really nicely. I, I was skeptical that it would actually fit in here, but if he takes out this whole unit, which you really don't need, that little shelving unit, we can slide it back in the corner there. And uh, yeah, it should work just fine. I'm going to try to get a video of this when he installs it. I don't know when that's going to be, probably in the next couple of days, but um, you guys can look forward to that and we'll do some uh, testing, see how cool it actually makes it in here. But yeah, once again, this is a 10,000 BTU LG uh, portable air conditioner, and he's got to work on getting it to fit properly in the window. Um, what he might said he might actually do is actually um, make a hole in the side of the trailer and actually put the tube like here or probably most likely be a little bit lower like something like right there but um we we have a few different options we're gonna do some more research because the way it's supposed to work is you put this in the window and then whoop, that's not supposed to fall and then of course this will go ahead and slide right into that so we'll have to see what happens hopefully we can get installed in the next few days and uh, go ahead and give it a try all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here for today and what i'm gonna leave you with is a slideshow of simon it's gonna be my little tribute to my buddy and uh, i'm gonna play some appropriate music there too and hopefully you guys enjoy it uh please remember to like and subscribe and as always have a blessed day everybody